Hi, and welcome to Online Sunday School. And we are gonna have a Sunday School lesson today about what goes in your heart and what comes out of your mouth. And I call it garbage in, garbage out. So let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share your word with everyone who's listening. I pray, Lord, you can give me the right words to say. And I pray, Lord, that you can help each one of us to learn something and to use it in our lives. And I thank you, Lord, for blessing us with so much every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, like I said, this lesson is about what we put in is what's going to come out of our body, out of our mouth. Um, so let's start off with a garden. Who's all helped make a garden? I think most of you have helped with that, right? So when you take seeds and you have little packages that have the kind of seeds, right? You have carrots and corn and all sorts of different kinds of plants. So you take the seeds from a carrots and you make your row and you plant your seeds and you cover them up with dirt. And what I usually do is I take the seed package and I staple it onto a stick right by the row. That way I know that I planted carrots there. Then I go to corn and then I plant my corn. And once it's buried, then I take my empty corn bag and I staple it to the stick so I know I have corn. And in a couple of weeks, what comes up? Carrots come from the carrot row and corn comes from the corn row, right? You wouldn't get pumpkins coming from corn or you wouldn't get um, watermelon from carrots, right? If you would, you'd probably be upset because you wanted carrots. The same with us. We have to have truth in our life and the truth we have to speak so that there is no one can be, we can't be ashamed that nothing that we say can be wrong or guilty, that we have truth in our life. And let's start with a Bible verse. So we're going to go to James chapter 3, verse 5. James chapter 3, verse 5. Okay. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. The tongue is one of the smallest parts of our body. And if you keep reading in this chapter, it talks, it says in verse 8, But a tongue can no man tame. Anything else can be tamed. All the animals and all sorts of different things but it says the tongue can no man tame. We have to choose ourselves to control our what we say. It's, it's very hard to do, and we have to work with it every single day. So I want to give you some Bible verses to help you, and I also want to give you some examples. Proverbs 15, verse 2. Let's go there first. Old Testament, after Psalms, Proverbs 15, chapter, or chapter 15, verse 2. And it says here, well, we'll do one and two. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. And in verse 2, it says, The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. So two things. Somebody comes up to you that's, that's really angry and says something, you have two choices. You can get angry or you can be calm. And it says here, a soft answer will turn away wrath or anger. But if you have grievous words, if you use mean words, it's going to stir up anger. And I think you all know that's true, right? I know that's true for sure. And the same with verse 2. It says, the tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright. They use wisdom and knowledge for good. But fools, their tongue is just going to speak foolishness, make anger, make jealousy, make, um, make fun of people, all sorts of different things, right? So we need to watch our tongue. Okay, so now I've got some stuff here. I've got a bag 
and I got a bunch of stuff here. Toothpaste, I've got some old tomato, an old avocado, got a banana, I got some bubble bath, and I got some dish detergent, and I got a piece of toast. So we're gonna use an example for both. I'm gonna use an example for each one. And by the way, today is gonna be Mother's Day. So first I wanna say happy Mother's Day to all you moms. And I also want to say, we're gonna use each one of these examples for something you can do for mom, for Mother's Day or for any day. Okay, so let's start. Here I have a bag. And let's start with some toothpaste. What can you do with toothpaste? Well, it's meant to brush your teeth, right? But if you want to do something bad with toothpaste, I'm sure your brain can figure out all sorts of stuff to do with toothpaste, right? It's slimy, it's sticky, you can spread it all over the place. So we're gonna say, we're gonna use it for bad in this bag. The bag is bad and we're gonna give examples of good. So I'm gonna take the toothpaste and squeeze it into the hair. And one thing I wanna show you is that when I squeeze this out like this, can I get that back in here? It's impossible. You would have to use like a needle and a, somehow pre seal it and squeeze it. It would be a ton of work or it would never even work, right? The same with our words. Sometimes those words come out so fast that we don't have a chance to even stop our words and they're out and it, oh, we feel so bad for saying those words, but it's too late. The good thing is we can ask for forgiveness. We can ask forgiveness from God and we can ask forgiveness from the person we said it to. So we have the option of that, but the best thing is, like it said in the Bible, to use our tongue for good. So we have this over here, so we can squeeze some more in. And what's the other thing we can do with toothpaste that would be something that we could help mom out, right? Or we could do something that mom would like. Well, it's pretty easy. You could brush your teeth, right? All moms like a clean, a clean kid. <laughs> so we can brush our teeth or we could make a mess and we could do something bad with it, right? Okay, there's a toothpaste. Next example. Let's say we got this old tomato and we got this old avocado. Well, it's pretty easy to figure out what you could do with an old tomato and an old avocado, right? There's all sorts of mean things you could do to your brother or you could do to people, right? Or you could make a big mess outside. But what you could do for good is it's compost, right? This is in the kitchen because we made supper and these are leftovers. Instead of being told to, or instead of just letting it sit there and stinking, or instead of mom having to go clean up everything, you take the compost outside, or you go put it in the garbage and you clean it up, right? That would help mom out lots. Instead of her having to do everything after supper, she's already made a big supper and now she has to clean everything up, right? So you guys can help. But this is the bad bag, right? So we're gonna throw it in there. And the same with the avocado, same thing, it's compost, right? It would taste really good on burgers and with, with chips, but if it gets rotten and gross, it also doesn't taste good, right? It's not good. So we need to clean it up before it starts to stink. So we can put that in here and see if it'll squeeze. There you go. Okay. The next thing we have is some toast. And I'm sure you guys can already figure out what I'm gonna do or what I what we could do with toast for bad and what we could do toast for good, right? We could make mom a nice little breakfast for Mother's Day. Or we could make a sandwich. We could do all sorts of things for mom and help her out. And you could make a big mess. Bread makes lots of crumbs, right? You could do all sorts of stuff. So I am going to put it in here, rip it up a bit. Oh, it's already got toothpaste on it, Bruce. Okay, now, banana. 
I like bananas really ripe. They're nice and sweet. Some people like them green, but I like them ripe. But the bad thing with ripe bananas, you have to be really careful. They get really mushy. So again, two options. Each one of these is a choice. Each one of these, we have a choice to do something good or something bad. So we got this banana. And it still looks pretty good. But we're going to throw it in here because we're going to have the bad bag, right? We already talked about this would make a nice snack, right? You could give this to mom for a snack if you wanted to, or make it for uh, some kind of dessert. But we're going to put it in here. Okay, now we got the last two. You can guess what I'm going to say about this, right? I'm going to say wash dishes for mom, right? After supper, clean up the house for her, give her a break, do some dishes for her, tell her to go and sit in the tub with bubble bath. Make your mom a nice bubble bath and she can relax in the tub while you guys do dishes and maybe make a nice snack for her. So let's put some bubble bath in here. There you go. So the same with ditch detergent. I know our kids do dishes at home and it is very nice for my wife that she doesn't have to spend a long time making supper and then have to spend a long time by herself doing, doing dishes. And the kids are old enough to help with that thing. And it's a really big blessing for us that the kids can do this for her. So then we put this detergent into here. There you go. Now, all this stuff I talked about, everything in here could be used for good. It doesn't look very good in here, right? And I can squeeze it all around. Ah, it's looking even uh, even grosser, right? Yeah, that's pretty gross. Okay, we'll let that sit and soak for a while. Let's look up some more verses. Okay, let's go to Luke chapter 6. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For, out of, the, for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. What we put into our heart every day, into our mind, what we see, what we do, the people we hang out with, that keeps going in and gets soaking in. It just soaks in, just like this bag. It's just soaking, all the stuff is getting soaked in there. And whatever we do will show that. So whenever we say something, it'll come from our heart from our brain so when we have any problems in in life the first thing that we're going to do or say is what our brain is full of whatever our body or our heart or brain is full of that's what's going to come out of my mouth and i'll give you an example is i used to listen to not Christian music. I used to listen to country or I used to listen to some old rock and roll and I thought it's just music, right? It's not a big deal. I'm still, I still go to church. I'm still a good person. I go to Bible study, but I like my old fashioned rock and roll music. There's nothing wrong with that. But I started teaching more and more Sunday school. I started going to more and more Bible studies and that one day I started listening to, this, to the words of the songs I was listening to. And you know, just like me, that we can memorize songs very easy. Songs are one of the easiest things to memorize and it sticks in your head for years and years. 
And I started listening to these words. I started singing them out loud and saying them out loud. And I just thought, oh, this is not good. These are not good songs. Even though it doesn't sound bad, but when you start saying each word for word, they were not really nice songs. So it took a long time, but I turned my, my radio station to a Christian radio station. And I started listening to that. And it took a long time because I didn't know any of the songs. But slowly, slowly, I started memorizing songs. And I found myself singing songs, singing along when there was a song came on. And then at the same time, I found myself listening to other uh, preachers and other things on the radio. And I, and I would start thinking of those preachers or thinking of those songs when I was working somewhere by myself or when I was doing something. And slowly, it started to fill up my brain with good stuff instead of with songs that were not very nice. And it was very nice to be able to, it felt good to be able to have a clean, clean brain that it wasn't full of all sorts of bad stuff. Same with watching TV, same with reading books and the same with hanging out with friends that you know are not very nice or with people that aren't very nice is that if you fill yourself up with that, you know what's going to come out the next time someone gets mad at you or the next time you get mad or you hurt yourself or something doesn't go your way. Either something good's going to come out or something bad's going to come out. And again, it's our choice, right? We can have, we can have this choice or we can have a choice where we can give, we can help people with dishes or we can give mom a break or we can make her some food or we can do all sorts of things, right? With the same, with the same things, we can do good or bad. Whatever side, good or evil, whatever side we, we feed, that's what's going to grow bigger. And it makes sense, right? Just like a, an animal or just like anything, like a plants. If you have two plants and two animals and one you give lots of food and lots of water and one you give almost nothing, which one's going to get bigger, right? Of course, the one that you get the most food to. So if we always give food to our good side, then when we want, when, some, when something happens to us, it's going to come out good instead of coming out bad but it goes both ways so you have to be really careful which side you grow so then let's go to colossians chapter 4 chapter 4 verse 6 let your speech be always with grace seasoned with salt that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man our speech, the way we talk, we have to have grace. We have to have love to the next person we talk to. And we have to have, it says seasoned with salt. We have to be able to know what we're talking about. And we also have to read the Bible. And we have to pray and go to Sunday school and go to Bible studies. That it says that we know how to answer every man. And God will help us with that. If we are sincere and we want to talk to people about Jesus, then he will give us the right words. And the Bible gives us those words. And we need to keep studying in the Bible. All right. And let's try Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs 21, verse 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keepeth his soul from troubles. Keepeth is another word for being, being quiet or holding back and, and waiting and watching. So it says, whoso or whoever will keep his mouth and his tongue will keep his soul from trouble. So that is something we all have to work with. Old and young, everybody, right? We have to always remember that our tongue, it's like a, the first verse I read about how it can, a little fire can make a big fire. And you guys all know that, right? From having a campfire or anything, that one little match, it's so small, but if you're not careful, that can burn the whole house down. 
and it's very, very fast. Let's first go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse seventeen and eighteen. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. If you read the whole chapter, it's talking about idols and it's talking about being with people that aren't Christian and stuff like that. So it says, if you come out from out of those people that are not doing good, and it says, be separate and touch not the unclean thing. Don't touch stuff that's going to get you in trouble, right? Instead of touching it and just playing with it, don't even put your hand close to it, right? Turn around and walk the other way. If you see someone coming and you know they always want to bug you and you know you can't help yourself and you get very angry, turn and walk the other way or do something different, right? That you don't have to go into that situation. And it says here, if you are separate and if you don't touch the unclean thing, then it says, I will receive you. It's another promise. There is over 3,000 promises in the Bible and so many of these are promises and there's another promise i will receive you it doesn't say maybe it says i will and it says in verse 18 and will be a father unto you you will be my sons and daughters and that is a promise another promise okay so then what i had left is talking about the glass half empty or half full have you guys heard of that one before? Looking at the life, looking at life half empty or half full. So if this bottle is almost exactly half, a lot of people would say, oh, it's almost half gone. What's the use? I'm just gonna throw it in the garbage. I can't even take a bubble bath anymore. And it's almost gone, right? Or the next person would say, hey, I still have half a bottle left. I can probably take like five more bubble baths before it's empty. There's always a negative and a positive. You can always choose one or the other. And you guys, I'm sure, all know of people that are negative. And most people like that are not that fun to be around because it's always about complaining or it's always negative. So we have to always remember that we need to be happy and, and thankful that Jesus has come down to earth and saved us if we accept him. We are born again, and we have that blessed hope. So now I'll take my knife, and I'm going to cut a little hole at the bottom of this here into here. Then I have a question for you. What would you rather someone do to you would you rather someone do the things that are in this bag you know you could do stuff with toothpaste or you could take an old banana or you could take some old compost and you could do all sorts of bad things with it or would you rather have someone do something good to you i think we all know that answer everybody it feels good when someone does something for us and so we can do this. We know that if it feels good, if someone does it to us, we should do the same to them. And what's the, what's the rule? It says, treat others the way you want to be treated. So now if we would squeeze this stuff out. Oh, gross. I think that was some banana. <laughs> yeah, that's not very, very good, is it? And I don't think anybody would want to eat that or have that as a present for Mother's Day. I don't think so. Okay, let's go to our last verse of the day. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. So Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus and I am so thankful that Jesus Christ always promises that he will hear us if we come to him and we are really honest and we want to come to him with something all right that's my sunday school lesson i hope you guys learned something and i hope you guys have a good rest of the sunday and god bless you